Hello, my name's Tom. I'm a dietitian and one of the sports nutritionists here at Discount Supplements. Now today's how-to video is on how to maximize results from creatine. Well, creatine has been one of the most popular sports supplements for more than a decade. It has been the subject of more research than any other supplement on the market and that includes protein. It has absolutely no side effects if taken sensibly and is completely safe as a nutritional supplement. Now there are numerous forms of creatine on the market including creatine ethyl ester, micronized creatine, tricreatine citrate, magnesium creatine and creatine monohydrate to name a few. But by far the two most popular forms of creatine is ethyl ester and monohydrate. So what's the difference between the two? Well, further research is needed on creatine ethyl ester because some of it's been dubious and not particularly clear. But the theory is that ethyl ester increases the bioavailability or the absorptive capacity of creatine. Now, esterification, and certainly where ethyl ester gets its name from, is a process commonly used in the pharmaceutical industry to increase the bioavailability of drugs. But it is unclear at the moment whether this process works for creatine too. What the, what the experts actually theorize, though, is that creatine monohydrate is actually absorbed through creatine transporters. Now, that's relatively well understood. That's known. They all actually think now that creatine ethyl ester may actually aid absorption because it can actually go in at any point of the muscle through the sarcolemma. Now, as lovely as this thought is, we do need more research on this to prove it. Now, creatine monohydrate is widely regarded as the most effective form of creatine on the market. And unlike ethyl ester, monohydrate is generally stable in acidic conditions such as those found in your stomach. Now, other than pure 100% creatine, which isn't generally sold on its own, monohydrate is the purest form of creatine. And consequently, it's the most readily absorbed by the body. Now consider also micronized creatine. And good examples of this are PhD and Optimum Health Ultimate Creatine. Because micronized creatine is actually 20 times finer than regular monohydrate. Meaning it digests quicker, absorbs better, and is generally the most pure form of creatine due to the extra purification steps. Now remember to consume creatine alongside a, a protein supplement in order to maximize its effects. Protein is the main building block of your muscle, meaning creatine's anabolic or growth properties are minimized if protein levels are too low. So onto the nitty gritty of creatine. How do you actually go about taking it? Well, the best way to achieve muscle saturation of creatine is to consume approximately 0.2 grams of creatine per kilogram of body weight for the first three to four days. Now this is known as the loading phase. After this, consume slightly less, around about 0.05 grams per kilogram of body weight per day, which equates to about three to five grams for an average 80 kilogram male. Now this is known as the maintenance phase and is designed to maintain the level of creatine within your muscles. Now, it's vitally important that after four weeks of taking creatine, you stop and observe a flush out phase, whereby you stop taking creatine completely, consuming 35 milliliters per kilogram of body weight of fluid, at least, per day, for a minimum of three weeks to flush your kidneys and the rest of your body. So remember, the only recognized side effect of creatine is weight gain in the form of muscle size and mass. Now this means creatine is a safe, effective and affordable supplement to support with muscle development, power, concentration and performance enhancement. Do be sure to consume at least 35 milliliters of fluid per kilogram of body weight when taking creatine.